Howdy folks. Um, let me just check. My audio level looks good. Uh, perhaps you can uh, just come back to me on um, the audio, make sure it's okay. No buzzing, that the level's right, etc. Um, welcome to Wednesday evening. I'm actually on time for a change. I know this is very unusual. I also have tea, of course. But of course. How's everybody doing this evening? I actually feel pretty organized. Things kind of went right today. Monday was really, really tricky. When I, when I built the first uh, Black Ice NXT, the new one, oh boy. In fact, I built two. And uh, it all went a bit Pete Tong, quite frankly. Um. <laughs> it's incredible how difficult the Black Eyes NXT mezzanine is to build versus the um, Ice Logic Bus. I mean, the Ice Logic Bus has some uh, caveats because it's a double sided board. Um, that means I have to do effectively uh, two or three stages of the build. Uh, Laurie says the audio is fine by the way. Thank you Laurie. Um, and I, I haven't forgotten about uh, the weekend. I will come back to you probably. Um, we could probably meet up Saturday or something. I need to just check what everyone else is doing. I don't know if you have a preferred day, let me know. Um, Yeah, because there's three stages to the Ice Logic, um, the Ice Logic bus build. Um, let me remind you again, guys, of what it looks like. That's the uh, PCB. So all that stuff on the front I do via the normal um, uh, reflow process, stencil, and then I place the components. And they're actually not too difficult to place. A couple of tricky ones, but most of it works nicely. If I can get a better focus on this, I'm not focusing for someone. There's a lot of light shining on. Where's that coming from? It must be reflecting off the screen. It's because um, it's still really bright outside, and that comes in through the window and reflects off the screen. So yes, this side is where most of the components are. The uh, FPGA. Um, or the serial line terminators, I'm um, sorry, serial line impedance matching, uh, and then the power supply over here, and the USB power delivery. And then you've got the two mezzanine connectors, one, two here. And the mezzanine sits on top of that, and then you've got these nice um, gold uh, fingers, if you like or prongs, as we've called them before, with the apertures in for the tile boards. The purpose of those is you can actually get a tile uh, in between, so if you, it's a tile PCB. So when that goes on, it goes on like this. I know that's not level, but, and it peeps through, which is kind of cool. If you haven't seen that before. And then there's the other side because it's double sided construction. So there's a few tiny, teeny tiny components which are really decoupling caps um, underneath the BGA. They're unavoidable if you want a decent operation. There's also uh, a jumper for the programming voltage. That's just in case you want to program it with the permanent program voltage. Most people don't, but it's, it's there if you want it. But more importantly, the tile connectors, one, two, three, and four. Um, and for this build, what I did was I built those manually by hand, even, even putting the decoupling caps on with a soldering iron. I won't do that again, it took me ages. 
Um, next time I'll repaste this layer and put those on. Uh, it'll be a lot quicker. And I will manually solder these because these actually work well with the uh, manual soldering. Um, I'm not going to do what I did on the very first prototype one of these where I had both sides populated. I put it in the oven, uh, reflowed it and then promptly these bottom connectors when it heated up dropped off. It was a nightmare. made a right mess of the board. Um, in fact, if you look at the old one, this is the uh, previous prototype. The penultimate prototype, if you like. And uh, you look at the bottom, very iffy on the connectors, very rough. And they're not all perfectly straight, which is a nightmare fitting the tiles on sometimes. Nightmare. Anyhow. Also, the... Uh, programming hack. Can you see? You look closely at this. Can you see how I've hacked it on? Because we had the, because um, I managed to get the um, footprint back to front. <laughs> Anyhow, it all worked, but it was just, yeah, the few refinements and that's where we had the kind of P-mods on the top, which we don't have anymore, because those now go on the tiles. Also, it makes the top look ugly. Look at all those solder joints down there. Yuck. So, great improvement over that. So, we're going to talk about that new board. So, um, yes, as I was saying, uh, if you get the connectors right on here, and I did them manually, and they come out pretty well. Um, the only differences between this and the previous one, really, are that... I've got the uh, uh, power delivery on board here, which used to be on the mezzanine. It goes on top there, but they're actually here now, conveniently situated next to the power, switch mode power supplies. I've also added a battery connector as well, which we can use. That's optional. I don't install that. And yes, it's lovely. Pretty gold, look. Pretty gold. Lovely unique. Beautiful, man. Beautiful. Even the little logo has some beauty. Can you see? Focus, come on. You can do it. There we go. Look at that. Some enig in my logos. So that's the uh, Ice Logic bus. That's the mid plane. Call it the mid plane because it kind of sits in between the uh, mezzanine or the Black Ice NXG in this case and the tiles so it provides the io if you like and then on top of that we have the mezzanine in this case it's the black and black ice nxt board let me see if we can get any focus in on now this one isn't unique come on you can do it you can do it come on camera well, it's having trouble because it's very bright on that reflection. Well, taking even longer than usual. Is it pit? Ah, wait a minute, I know. Because I've got stuff in the background there, look. Come on. Wow, it's being really rubbish. It's a bit better. Uh, so in the centre there you see the STM32. Uh, that horrible TQFP 100 package. God, I hate that package. Uh, also on here you've got the uh, Hyper RAM and Hyper Flash. The normal USD for communication. Then you've got USD card. Then you've got Blade 1. And then you have a Blade on the other side. 2, 3 and 4. And then that sits on top. See, I've got some plastic legs on that. So that kind of fits on top of the uh, wow. 
I thought I seen a marking on that. Just realised one of the layers didn't go out. How weird is that? Anyhow, so that kind of clips on top. Only it normally has the connectors, these are just bare PCBs. And then we put the screws through on these, uh, on the fingers and the legs for the tiles. And then we use, you know, all sorts of pastas and stuff to uh, clip those in. And my ushers, and screws, etc. etc. Uh, let me check the messages. Um, Ipo says the gold is looking spiffy, doesn't it? Just shiny. Try right, need some tea. And you should be able to see. So um, I've assembled a complete development system, and you should be able to see that just below me here in this picture. Can you see it? Let me point out a few things with my screwdriver. So uh, underneath on the bottom tile section, we've got the double proto tile, which has P mods on here, P mod there, and then the mix mod here. Can you see my pointer? So that's installed. And then on the top, we have the seven segment tile installed. Can you see it facing up? And that's actually flush with these fingers perfectly flush and it fits in perfectly I love it when a plan comes together uh, and then you normally have either a HDMI or DVI card um, or VGA tile and initially I'm going to ship these with VGA tiles because this current HDMI tile doesn't work properly there's a mistake on it so that's going to the initial shipment the development kit will have the VGA tile but you'll get the DVI tile in the um, care kit that comes next month. Um, just so you can see what's happening here. This LED is on the... Oh, Twinkle. Do you want to say hello? Say hello to the folks. Say hello to the internet. You'll get it back. You just come in from outside. Hey. I suppose you want to go through the door. I'm the butler again. Come on then. Um, yeah, so where was I? Uh, there. This LED is on the ICE Logic Bus. And it's an RGB LED. Um, by default, um, uh, the red part of the LED is connected to the dump pin. So obviously when it's not programmed, like it is now, the red is engaged. Um, also the CS pin, I believe, is now connected to the green pin. Um, and the blue LED is connected to the... Uh, interrupt pin which also connects to the SDM32 and we can use that for doing blinky if we need to. Uh, when I program this you will see this change change colour because the red LED should extinguish, extinguish. Okay, it's quite important. There is another LED and another RGB LED which is over here but it's underneath on the Black Ice NXT and it actually beams down uh, onto the um, um, ice logic bus you can actually see some coloring here on these components can you see that's a kind of orange color as well so the way that that RGB LED is wired is that the green is wired permanently to ground so when the power comes on it's green um, there's also a mode pin which in this case is active which is the um, uh, red pin. That's why you've got this orange hue. And then the other pin is connected to the TX pin, 
which is also shared between the Black Ice MX, sorry, the Black Ice NX T and the uh, FPGA. Uh, it's also shared as I think pin six on the Blade One. Um, but you can, we can change that as well. I can go through some of that stuff. Um, then also what I have here, you can't see it very well, is the first microblade prototype I've built. Uh, we still need to do some work on this. There's quite a bit to do. But this is the LED prototype. And we're going to have a little go with that a bit later. And this has six LEDs on it. Um, I think it's six, uh, two green, two amber, and two red, if I remember rightly. Um, so that's microblade one here on this side. The other microblades are on the other side here, but we're not going to. We don't need to bother with those. Um, any questions? Just let me know. Um, I know IPO says, I know you have been programming using Python, but can it be programmed like the MX? Uh, yes, it can, IPO. I can go, go, go over that. Um, we've basically got new firmware um, that's, that's backwards compatible with the Black Ice MX. We've managed to make it backwards compatible. I thought we were going to lose that at one point, but we've managed to keep that. The big difference with the um, firmware is it's now written in Rust. It's not written in C++. Um, and the, uh, the uh, repository for that is um, the Black Crab repository. Um, let me get you a link and I'll post that here. So So you've got that. So that, that is backward compatible with um, Black Ice MX, or, or Ice Core in fact, which was on the Black Ice MX. So what happens there is you've got this auto-magical detection of the FPGA image. So if you, if you send an image to the serial port that is connected to the um, Black Ice NXT, just like the Black Ice MX, it recognizes that that's an image coming to it and it programs the ICE 40 with that image, that FPGA image. It looks for a particular signature. So that is the same from a backward compatibility point of view. We, we provided that, that, that same background. So that comes up as a USB CDC serial port. That's the way that the USB comes in. The USB is plugged in here to the black ice. Um, NXT and that's just going directly to the host and it's as I say it's a serial CDC connection so that's exactly the same. Um, I post is asking about what the advantage is there to using the Python approach. Um, well I'm not going to cover that here I mean you have seen me doing it before but basically um, We've become opinionated in the way that we're um, building the examples and the documentation, etc., in supporting Amaranth as the HDL description language, if you like, or the uh, uh, the way of programming the FPGA part of it. So you will see me using things like the Python console. So what we have now is we're building in the, excuse me, the Pi serial um, um, library with Python and combining that with Amaranth in order to talk to the uh, synthesized FPGA as well as programming it. So there's a bridge between the STM32 and the ICE40 that we can used to talk to a bus that we set up inside the uh, um, ICE40 synthesis, basically. So it just makes the whole thing more programmatic. So if you're doing testing and things, you can automate that. 
if you want to do a combination of using the STM32 with the HDL that you've designed for the um, for the FPGA, then you, you can get both of those things working together. So when I'm using the Python console on this end, what I'm doing is I'm creating an Amaranth piece of HDL, which I'm actually building inside Python and then uploading inside Python. But I can also do things like automate, automate finding the port. Normally before, when you're working with just say raw Verilog um, and make files, um, you need to know which port it is, for example. And on Windows, that can be quite tricky. Um, the easiest way to do it is use uh, Windows subsystem for Linux. But um, what we can do in Python, and I can show you the code, is we can actually look for the signature of our um, uh, Black Ice NXT board so that it automatically finds that, which is much more convenient. It's much easier to get started with. And, you know, Python's kind of cool and easy to hack with and easy to write tests for. Uh, and what you'll find is um, when we start putting the library pieces together, we'll have a more orchestrated way of dealing with the, the synthesis. Um, is, and, uh, I know it was a very long answer, I post, but... Um, yeah, we only we, we're only just starting to get that stuff running, uh, the more automated parts of it, and the communication channel between, you know, the STM32 running the Rust software and the uh, synthesis, you know, the bus or whatever that we're putting inside the um, I40. Uh, like I said, do you mean using Python-based Amaranth on the FPGA or just using Python client host? I was saying uh, I was just talking about using the synth, synth command in Python versus the serial port, but um, I'm finding what he's covering interesting as well. He's talking about me, obviously. Uh, just wasn't sure what would be available for configuring the FPGA. I uh, wasn't sure if serial was still depreciated, but now I know. Yeah, both are still there. It's backward compatible. Um, by doing the Python stuff, we're, we're building a layer above that that makes it easier to integrate, particularly when it comes to things like Amaranth and testing. Okay, uh, any other questions before I move on? So I've been around the new design. Um, um, I also currently have the debugger plugged in. Um, this is the ST, free, ST Link Free, excuse me. Uh, and that's got a, a IDC cable here that goes into uh, the standard ARM miniature 10 pin JTAG connector that's on the Black Ice NXT board. Uh, and that's carrying um, SWD debug. Um, it also has an SWO monitor so we can send messages back from the Rust embedded firmware as well in a very efficient way without having to take up or use peripherals makes debugging easier and that's using rust probe on the host side as well which is nice uh, it also reduces the amount of code that we need both on the development side and the amount of traffic that goes between the two it does hashing of uh, custom strings and stuff which is kind of very cool uh, but again, I'm not going too deep into that. That's that's for a, that's for another session. Um, any other questions before I move in? Uh, we're not really depreciating the serial. We're just kind of wrapping it up, so it's nice. It's still there underneath, and you can still use your make files without a problem. I post Th those will still work. You just got to know which port you're talking to, obviously. People that are already familiar with that, that's easy. If you're coming to it for the first time, it's a bit more complicated, of course.
Oh, my tea's not too hot today. That's because I made it slightly earlier. That's because I was ready for once. Big Ed couldn't make it tonight, unfortunately. He's on a Zoom call. Uh, Laurie's just explaining to iPost the synth call uh, platform build, which then uses a serial port. That's right. Um, let me show you that actually because I've got the code here. So if we look at the build section, if we look at my um, the synth function I'm using here, ignore the stuff that's commented out. First thing it does is it grabs the Ice Logic Bus platform. Um, that comes from the um, Ice Logic Bus board file. Now the board file is a standard way of describing the pinouts and resources that a board has for Amaranth, what used to be N-Major. Um, we're doing a little more with it than that, and I'll come back to that a bit later. Um, so first we get that. We then add a resource in. Uh, in this case, we're adding a tile resource um, with a tile number determined by this tile constant. So if we go to the top of this, what we find is we've dis already uh, set this constant so tile position free uh, which is currently where the seven segment is uh, but that could, could be any of the tiles this enables us to work with any tile and tile position with a peripheral um, we then call the normal platform build in this case we're building an instance of the seven segment example um, HDL uh, we're also adding to this do program true. So not only does it build the project and create the HDL, but it actually talks to it over the serial port. But the way it talks to it over the serial port is it uses, um, Amaranth doesn't know anything about serial ports. You implement your uh, programming function. Um, so if you were to look at, so if we go and have a look at, um, Have a look at the ice logic bus file. So obviously this is still work under in progress, so we haven't finished. Um, and I'll come back to this. Notice I've actually added the blade pins in now because we're going to be doing some work with one of the blades this evening. Um, so the tiles are defined here on pin numbers. So these are all just constant strings. Um, for the pinouts, that's the way that Amaranth likes to um, have these configured. Uh, the mezzanine ones are actually wrong because that's changed, but I need to update those. We then have our ICE Logic Bus Platform class. Remember, I showed you that we're we're pulling that class in. Um, obviously, um, in this case, we're defining what the device is, what the package is. So it's the ICE 40, and it's the BG121. Uh, 121 ball version what the name of the default clock is which is a 25 megahertz clock that's generated from the black ice nxt and passed down through the connector we then have and that's defined there you can see what frequency that is we then got some other resources we've got a led in this case this points to the blue led inside the rgb led uh, we've then got things like a TX and an RX, which are used for the UART. Um, we've then got resources which are used as the communication bus. So this is a, the QSPI, uh, which is a quad SPI interface between the STM32 and the ICE40. And that will go up to about 108 megahertz potentially when we've optimized it. Um, we've then got a UART wrapped resource if we need to use one of those. Um, and then we've got a bunch of connectors. So this is where we build our connectors. So in this case, we're building the four different tiles that are on the bottom uh, of the system. And then we've got four different blades, which are defined around the Black Ice NXT port. 
I've also got a convenient function here um, where it tries to find the serial port. Um, so it uses um, Pi Serial. Uh, it does a list of the ports here and it looks for the vendor ID that we're currently using for the Black Ice firmware. This won't be the one that we ship with. We have a new vendor ID that we're going to be using for that. Um, so if it finds that, it uh, stores that locally in this uh, platform class. This is what's called when you ask Amaranth to build your HDL. Um, so first of all, it checks to see if we've got a port. If not, it goes off and gets the port for us to talk to so we know how to program it. It also gives you some nice convenient messages. Um, and here you can see it using that serial port here. So what it does is it extracts what's built from Amaranth, the binary file, if you like, that's going to be uploaded as a bitstream file name. It opens that with read binary format and then it does a write of that block by block um, out through the serial port. Um, this other func convenience function here is so that we can send data uh, over USB to the Black Crab firmware. That can then do all sorts of different things depending whether it's passing the information to the local firmware um, Black Crab or whether Black Crab itself is in turn passing this onto whatever synthesized in, in the ICE 40 over the QSPI channel. So we could then remotely start manipulating a bus that exists inside the uh, synthesized ICE 40 image that's running. Um, that's it really. That's how it works under the grid and that's how we're using these uh, uh, Python uh, console to do the the work that you'd normally do manually um, you know when you're uh, when you're using a make file and Verilog etc so we're just automating that so um, I guess are there any other questions on that because otherwise we can move on and uh, run a test on the tile. Um, let me just catch up on the comments. Um, Lloyd says on the ULX4M I have made a platform build support a variety of upload tools. On that board you can choose between DFU util and open FPGA loader. Uh, in the far distant future IPO says when I can buy the ULX4M I'll probably use open FPGA loader of your build. Lloyd's asking me a question for technology. It's quite nice having the upload done directly in Python rather than using the external tool. It is, you, you grow used to it. I still got some issues finding packages and path issues, but I, once I get those sorted out, it'll become a bit more streamlined. Um, but yeah, those are just minor bugs that we can deal with. So if there's no more questions on that front, um, let's go and run the um, seven segment tile stuff. Um, so this is um, this has got some examples in it of using the seven segment tile. So I'm just going to copy that. All of that. I'm not going to use all of it, but it's easiest just to copy it all. Copy that, and then I'm going to paste that into my Python console. Um, and now I'm going to call that, remember we had that uh, synth algorithm, that's going to build the seven segment example. Now if we look at the seven segment example, that's this one here. It's very simple. All it does is um, it adds the seven segment controller. Seven segment controller abstracts some of the lower level processes such as the conversion from, you know, a binary coded or binary to a uh, seven segment decimal, you know, controlling the seven segments of the uh, display, etc. Um, and then what we do is because we've loaded the tile and the its drive up into um, into the platform using the add resource that I showed you in 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 the um, sync function. 
Uh, we can then go and pick that up from our platform by name. Um, the LED7 in this case um, are really just the output pins um, for the segments of that display. We have a timer, 40 bit in this case. We then increment that timer on every clock cycle, which is running at 25 megahertz in this case. Uh, and then we connect up, you know, uh, in a synchronous fashion. Uh, we take the output from seven LEDs. Um, so what we do is we take that out to the tile effectively, to the tile IO. Um, and then in here we're doing some clever stuff. So what we're doing is because it's a seven, three digit seven segment, we're going through, we're enabling each digit in a row, one, two, three. So we're going through this triple cycle. Um, and when the relevant cycle comes up, we display the relevant digit. This is just a shortcut for that, basically. So if we now run this, we should be able to get something on the um, on the display. Wait a minute, what's Laurie saying? The APIO Black Ice Prog Tool should still work with APIO, but APIO will need configuring with their newer vendor and product IDs. Yeah, yeah, it's just a vendor ID change. Um, but it will need a new um, PCF file as well. So let's run Synth which synthesizes for me and voila. So we see here, found device for uploading, ice core as device, yeah, I'm still using the old names. I need to update that in the firmware. Um, and then it says look, uploading ice core as device. So it's even telling me what serial port it's got. And look what we have. Boop. Back to front, I wish I could turn this around. There, we have seven segment counting up. Lovely. So that's all working rather nicely. It's counting in binary, by the way, or hex, in case you were wondering. Yeah, there's two things that APIO will need an update on. One is the vendor ID and manufacturer ID, which are new, which are our own ones. And um, the other one will be, it will need a new PCF file. And I have been working on a PCF file as well. That's slightly behind the boards file at this point in time, but uh, we're getting there slowly but surely. Uh, APIO does something similar in Python um, for finding the ports. But I think it, yeah, I think it does allow you to choose, if I remember rightly. Technology, did you change the broken STM3200 board? I still have two boards. Uh, one of them is fine. This is the broken one. Uh, and I got carried away and broke it even more. Can you see all the flux? So this is, um, I'm trying to fix this, but there's a bit of damage on some of the pins, on some of the, sorry, on some of the, um, um, this, this is what Black Ice NXT looks like underneath when it's uh, populated, by the way. Although, to be fair, you don't normally see all that horrible, um, flux is because I am desperately trying to repair this but I've failed so far um, I think I've damaged a couple of the TQFN pins for the uh, STM32 um, so even when I replaced the STM32 it was not playing ball I couldn't I couldn't actually see the STM32 um, in the debug tool on the ST uh, link so yeah I think I've messed with it and look 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 at the ugliness of 
stuff on the back as well. That's because it's been on my hot plate, which has obviously picked up a lot of the um, gunk. I'm ordering some new flux, actually. I'm having to use... The, the flux I've got is really good. It's tacky flux, but it's uh, really, really messy, and you wouldn't want to use it for production. I prefer using a uh, uh, you know, water-soluble flux. Um, the other one I do use is I use the... Um, I love wart and metal stuff. I, I love their sold as well, although it's difficult to get their stuff now. I did actually locate another company selling their stuff um, on Google earlier, so I might might try those. I used to get it from Rapid Online, but they've got this really weird policy, so you can only buy the uh, water soluble uh, solder if you've got an account with them. Bonkers. But anyhow, so I've been using this as well. This is good, but very little left in it. So I'm trying to get some more of that because I need it for production and then what I do is I quite often I've got a whole crap load of syringes and I put it into these syringes. I normally buy it in quite a large quantity. Um, I'm looking at buying about five litres this time to last me because I know I've got a lot of boards to make up. So anyhow, yes. Um, this board is not pretty, it's not working, um, and I'm not even sure I'm going to be able to fix it, which is uh, really annoying because I've got hyper RAM and all sorts of other stuff on here, which will be a real waste. But, you know, welcome to the funky world of electronics, it doesn't always go your way. That was Monday, bad day, really bad day was not a happy bunny. Um, but the one I've got here, Tia, that's upside down, sitting on top of the ICE Logic Bus, that one worked perfectly. That's fine. I did have to... Um, it didn't work first time. I had a power problem, and I had... Um, I had the problem with the LQF piece. I had bridges. Um, I've been over the prototypes. How many have we had? Like three different prototypes in the last six months, something like that. In fact, no, maybe it's more like eight months if I count the first one. The um, the TQF piece are a nightmare. I've been reducing the aperture for the paste layer, so there's less and less paste. Uh, underneath the TQFP, um, you know, and when I, when I'm ordering it now, JLPC B freak out. They never go straight to build because they say your paste layer is much smaller than your pads. Are you sure you mean to do that, or would you like us to use your uh, the uh, pad area instead? Um, so I always have to respond to them and say no, no, no. I've purposely reduced it for this particular reason. But sometimes I'm not sure that they actually follow that, which is really annoying. Because there's definitely, you know, the big problem with the TQFPs is bridging between the pins. It's, I, I don't have an example here. But yeah, if you look very closely at this, I don't know if it will zoom in, but the pins on these TQFPs are parallelly close together but they're very long. Um, come on, focus. I'm not focus on this, does it? Maybe I do it. Mm, he's been playing ball. Anyhow. But they act, the gaps in between um, are like capillary tubes and they just seem to suck up the paste. So you always have to put a bunch of flux on them afterwards uh, and either do a second reflow or just use a soldering iron and go around them and get rid of any bridges. Um, despite the fact that I've been reducing the aperture every time. Ironically, 
Now, I've been reducing the aperture on the FPC connector for the FMC bus slash display on here. This is a very high pitch. This is the same pitch as those pins, but there is more space between the actual conductors and the um, and each other rather than this tiny gap that you get on the two QFPs. So yeah, it was very frustrating on Monday building those because I thought I'd reduced you know the paste enough that that shouldn't happen but it was still still happening I was still having to uh, use flux to actually clean it afterwards to debridge it um, yeah you know you'd think that the ice logic board would be the difficult one but it's not that goes together the one I built today went together perfectly first time um, Whereas the two Black Ice NXT motherboards that I made on them, they both had issues initially. Um, one of which was easy to fix, the other one turned into a nightmare. So um, it's a bit of a pain really. Um, with that, you know, it's not my favourite package TQFPs. Not, you know, with those 100 pin TQFPs. Because statistically you are likely to get a bridge that you're going to have to clear up even with a good reflow process. Um, so yeah, why was I talking about that? Oh yes, because um, Laurie asked me if I'd uh, managed to fix that because I was saying I was going to have to transplant a new STM32 on, the, on that one. But I think that one, I don't know if it's going to be recoverable um, because there is some pad damage. Uh, and the trouble is when you get a bit of pad damage on a TQFP, chances are that the reflow is not going to go well when you put the new uh, chip on there. Um, so we will see on that one, but it doesn't matter because we've got a good one, and the good one is down there and it's working, doing as it should, doing as it ought, as they say. T's finished. Any other questions on that front before we move on? What are we up to? Seven, six, seven. It might have already been around once. My viewers have gone down. Really? Is it that boring? Right. No more questions on that front. Um, let's, what should we do? Let's do, uh, let's do a blade. Yeah. So I, uh, soldered one of the blades, one of the micro blades together, um, which you can see below. Um, let me just point to it. It's very difficult to see on this because it's not very big. Uh, there. So, why don't we create us a new example? Called LED blade. Um, first of all, let's do some copying. Just here's one I defined earlier. Uh, so I need the resource. Um, I'm going to need the libraries. I need a blade ID. And then I'm going to need to import. Some stuff. 
so it works don't think we need rows at the moment um, we'll need some sort of synthesis but I'll come back to that in a minute also we're going to need the um, what else we're going to need we're going to need class Hold me one sec. Copy this for a moment. like a good cheat so we've got six LEDs Now, uh, the way that we've defined this resource is very similar to the way that we define the tiles. So we give the resource a name, and this is zero, the zero F, one of these. Uh, we set out the pins, because there's six pins here, direction in this case, they're all out, but uh, the connector that we're using from the resources inside the uh, Ice Logic Bus platform is Blade. Um, with a blade number in this case set that to one and we're just using these in a standard uh, LV CMOS mode 3 volt free um, am I forgetting here class yeah I need that Um, elaborable. We're going to need same sort of thing we did here. We need a, a synthesize. Call this LED blade. Um, I'm going to need the um, build. Program. Um, in this case, LED blade. Put that in there. Okay. Uh, 
what is it you didn't like about this? I formatted this strangely. Something it doesn't like. Why doesn't it recognise class? I missed something. Amaranth build and amaranth import. Build. My store, my logic pass, yeah. Something missing here. Why isn't it getting that? That's weird. Nice class, surely. What is going on here? Oh, it's because I'm being an idiot. Okay. Um. Then I'm going to need to. Uh, hold on. Uh, I need to set up the state of these um, the tiles, the initial tiles. All the pins, then I need to make them. Uh, what do I need to do? I kind of need an initial setting. too big, make it smaller, like a blinky sort of size and then I need to put a value in to begin with don't I so it would be um, uh, Laurie can you remember how I set the initial value of a signal in this case the LED six. How do I set the initial value for that? I can't do an equals, can I? Um, do I have to set it up as a signal first with a reset value? Is that how you do it? I forget. When I define the signal, um, so LED is six, uh, 
equals signal and reset uh, equals um, I want to equal a constant P L is it um, Oops. And I need how many of those do I need? Uh, six of those, right? And it's six bits like that, basically. Uh, hold on, what am I doing here? Signal, signal, replicate, constant one. So that's the initial value. Yeah, it's a bit long-winded compared to Verilog when you write those little bits, but that should do the same sort of thing. And then I need to um, Um, bit twenty two, I guess. So when the twenty second bit goes high. Then I need to kind of do the shift thing. Sync. Um, six equals. What does it equal? Um, LEDs. Oh, this is where it's different because it's back to front to normal Verilog. Um, I want the top five bits to and then I want to invert it's like the old trail thing this might not work because I'm just because this isn't analog it might be slightly different to the way I'm thinking it is and I want to invert that right isn't it so that's the same as doing the tile so I'm getting all the pins 
and I'm and I'm um, assembling those into one single array. I'm concatenating them together. This time is 23 bits. So I increment it by one. Uh, so on the 22nd bit when it goes high. Then I'm going to effectively shift the inverted end LED like a trail thing. So let's paste that in and synthesize. Uh, what am I missing? One required positional argument count. Oops, that needs to be six, lots of those ones. Is that what it's talking about? Is that the count? So I need six ones to start with. Right, it doesn't like um, me doing this. Can I set this to, how do you do a, hold on, it's too elaborate. Maybe I just don't need a constant at all. Can I just do, how do I do binary in Python Amaranth? I want to kind of do one, two, three, four. I want to kind of do that. How do I do that? What's the format, Laurie? it's not is it 0b or something like that is that the way that you do it I forget now Let's see if it likes that it didn't complain oh I've got something my LEDs are lighting up. Can you see? Uh, uh, there on the blade. But it's not kind of doing what I expect it to do. 
two red ones are flashing and not the others. Let's slow it down so I can see what's going on. Can I set that to 23? Maybe it's going too fast to see what's going on. Something definitely not right there. Not behaving quite the way I expect. Oh, yeah, twenty feet is too big. Set up to twenty four then. It's just I can't see what's going on because it's happening quite fast. It could be making the others flash, but I can't see it. <laughs> no, the others still appear to be so. No, that's not obvious. So I don't. It's just one of them's flashing. I've, I've got it around the wrong way here. Let's make it twenty-two again. Is this maybe? I do one to five. Is it one to five or five to one? I always get mixed up because it's the opposite way round, isn't it? With bloody amaranth to what you're used to in Verilog or VHDL. That's almost working. Oh. Yeah, and it doesn't count the last one. <laughs> God! So frustrating those subtle differences in the two languages or representations should I say, not language. Is that working right now? Looks a bit weird. Oh yeah, good point. It's a good shortcut. The least, the most significant bit, in other words. That doesn't look quite like the trail does. But then again, I'm used to seeing it on four things. It's similar. I can't remember exactly what the Verilog was. It was something like that, anyhow. <coughs> but we've got some LED action on the blade. Bingo! Nice. <laughs> Laurie saying, I missed a bit as my grandson arrived and distracted me, telling me he doesn't like rust with WebAssembly, amongst other things. <laughs> no. I like rust. I've never really used the uh, WebAssembly. I've heard that it's one of its reasons for success because it's made it very convenient for a bunch of people. But that's not really my bag. The web assembly stuff. I tend to use it in an embedded environment, obviously. So slightly different. Don't even get standard. There's no standard. It's kind of weird the way that's flashing. That doesn't look quite right. I'm clearly doing something slightly different. But VB having the workings, flashing LED microblade. Yay! It's all going tickety boo. Mm. Tickety boo. We like this. Yes. So 
so we can use blades here we've got the same thing with these resources um, and then passing in the, uh, the number um, that means that um, we can do like blades so now this program will run on any blade all I have to do is change that and obviously physically move the blade to get it to work on one of the other blades which is nice we look at that but mechanically these aren't quite ready yet these microblades as I say I had to file this one down for it to fit in properly because there's a slight tolerance problem but it also moves slightly so I'm not 100% sure of its um, fit at this point so I'm gonna have to refine that um, with each generation of these I'm going to have to do another prototype, I think, of the microblade. Not the black ice NX2, that's fine. Those sockets are fine. Um, it's just the actual blade itself, getting the dimensions right, etc. Thickness and whatever. It's kind of weird because if you look at the... Um, I was measuring it earlier with the micrometer. So if you look at an SD card like this, it's probably difficult to see, it's probably not going to focus. Regular SD card, right? Yeah. What you find is the actual thickness here, on the bit that goes in, is um, 0.7. But the contacts in there, if you look, May even be slightly less than that. It's difficult to tell exactly. And then it's got a thicker bit right at the end. And what we're using on the blades, these are actually 0.8 rather than 0.7. So they're actually thicker. So they should be firmer in there, I'm thinking. There should be less movement. But I'm not convinced. But there is a little bit of side movement as well. So maybe we've got a bit of um, expansion. But of course the other thing is you know if you compare the length we're going a lot further out that gives us a lot more leverage so any small movement here is you know inside the SD cards represented by a much l larger movement on the outside so there's definitely some fiddling that needs doing with the dimensions to get these to be more consistent the other thing is, this is obviously just, you know, a kind of hassle finish on these. And that's not good enough. Um, we need at least an unique finish, I think, for these to work reliably as a contact. These pins. And the other thing I realised is I, I left the... Um, well, by default, when you create it in the library as a part, it adds a paste layer. Of course, you don't want a paste layer on here, on the contacts. So I need to uh, fix that. But yeah, good. These are Verkings. So, just to show you how fragile these are, if I... So if I take that out... I don't know if you can hear it clicking. I'll be really quiet. Listen. Did you hear the click? But look, even here, one of the LEDs hasn't come on. One of the orange ones. So I might need to... Yeah, I, well, it's one of the red ones. And I just touch it slightly. Now it's all working again. So there's still some issues with the contact. There's still some play in there that means it's not getting a perfect contact every time. I guess we should try one of the others. Let's try blade number two. No, let's go to the other end. Let's go to number four. So I'm going to take it out of here. 
I'm going to put it right at the extreme other end on the other side of the board so it's now just so I'll show you where the screwdriver is you might not see where I moved it to so it's now over here was over here blade one if we go round to three and now it's in position four I can see it's got a slight movement here that's what I'm going to need to stop is that movement so I'm going to have to um, look at those dimensions again but uh, let's try it in um, that position so this is exactly the same code the only thing I've changed is the blade number so it should all work there now I'm not seeing any LED stuff so again if I just change the position slightly this one looks worse than the other one for some reason unless one of the pins is not working maybe interesting is this is a lateral thing or I seem to get all those working. It may be, um, I may need to check the uh, joints on the um, socket connector. Maybe one of them's or more is out of place. Who knows? Yeah, definitely slightly dodgy on that one. Probably more dodgy. Let's try another. Let's go down to blade number three, see if that's any different. Definitely you have to do some mechanical work on these. Oh. Ooh. Don't know what that was. So again, movement changes it. However, we are getting all of the LEDs working on this one. So maybe that I, I need to check the um, the socket on that one. Maybe one of the maybe it's got a dry joint on one of the um, conductors of this socket. number three works okay which is cool um no he's saying i can't see the colors of the leds very well have you got two of the same color together yeah currently it's like on here it goes red red orange orange or amber amber green green I mean, yeah, you could do them alternately if you wanted. Um, I don't know if it's any clearer if I turn down the aperture. Mm, not that clear. Um, yeah, sorry that's so small. Uh, this camera doesn't help. It's quite a wide picture. Uh, Laurie's saying, do you think a button blade would work? Like a few buttons in my designs. And you don't have any on the boards. It's mainly 
red versus yellow, amber that isn't very clear. Yeah, that's part, you know, part of that is the camera I'm using is not that brilliant. And I'm kind of limited. If you look at the aspect ratio, you know, if I look below all of this space, below my fingers is unused where you can see the debug thing. Whereas if it was a kind of square aspect ratio, it would make it bigger. I mean, temporarily I could just adjust that. Hold on. I don't know if that makes it any clearer. Just bring it to the front, bear with me. That's a bit easier to see. Trouble is we lose the IDE obviously at this point. But at least you can see the LEDs now. If that helps um yes 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 but it's all working which is good i might have a dry joint on that um fourth microblade socket which i'll have to look at If the blades aren't very stable, buttons may not work. No, indeed. I mean, the other thing to note is these are only the first prototypes I've made. So mechanically, they're just an approximation at the moment. It will require some trial and error getting the dimensions right to reduce how much it moves. Once you can reduce it moving, then it's going to be fairly stable, I think. But yeah. Pressing down on a button might not be a good use. Like the blades aren't that brilliant for that. I don't think. I mean the tile would be more robust for buttons. Given the choice. In fact on the tire you could actually use keyboard buttons like MX buttons or something. Big clunkers. Because they fit in the apertures you see. You could probably get two or three in the aperture. I don't have any here to size them with. But yeah. I think you could get at least two in there, maybe three, on a tile. But it depends what you're using the buttons for. How are you thinking of using them? For gaming, you definitely wouldn't want to use a um, a blade. You need something very stable, and you need some nice buttons. The keyboard buttons would be nice on the aperture, I think. So if you look at the picture there, if you look down at the two apertures that have currently got Proto mod in them, you could have maybe six buttons, three on each side, or just three on one side or something. Depends if you want to a joystick as well, you might not. It's not that the blades aren't stable. I mean, these prototypes aren't, obviously, because they're wibbly, which is my first attempt. It's just they're not mechanically designed for that kind of high impact sort of thing. Whereas at least with a blade, you screw, you can actually screw the tile, sorry, with a tile, you can actually screw them in and make them much more firm, particularly for gaming.
for example, I sometimes use a button for reset and another for LCD reset for gaming or like a D-pad or a thumb pad control on a tile. Yeah. But there's nothing stopping you making a tile with, you know, proper keys on it. Like Cherry MX, or you could use smaller ones. Depends what you're trying to achieve, really. Lost amber again, look. I was thinking of sending out one of these LED tiles with the dev kits. I know they're a bit sloppy and stuff, but just for fun. So you get an idea of what a blade is like. Good. All right, questions, anyone? I'll just check and make sure no one's asked any more. Frame rate's good tonight as well. I'm um, already saying for for gaming, I'd like a D-pad or a thumb pad control on a tile. For reset buttons, a blade might be okay. If they're only used occasionally, yeah. Biddy mounts, anyhow. So, so does your debug connector work well on the new Black Ice NXT board? Yeah, it works perfectly. It fixes all the problems I had before. So, just to show you. How that works. Um, These are the ones I'm using. I'll do them in here. Right angled box housing. Luxury ones for the developer boards. If you look at the board here at the top. Or top right, then you inst you install that and you solder it in. In fact, I checked it all out before I soldered mine this time, so I didn't make the mistake I made last time. Then it goes on like that. And focus your bugger. I really wish this focus was a bit more consistent. Can you see at the top? Well, it 
Why not, maybe? Yeah. And the other side. Focusing very well on that. Come on, give me back my focus. Yeah. So then um, that's just uh, you plug it into the side, you know, with the IDC connector in this case from the ST link. This is what you can see going on here. See? Oh, I'm in the way. There. A bit difficult to see. The IDC cable comes out round to the SD. So I will probably um, solder those on to the development kit ones because it's the kind of thing that you'd need. In a development kit. Right, any other questions, folks? I think we've um, done well tonight. It's all gone pretty smoothly. I like it. I guess we should try the other position. We haven't tried that yet, have we? Blade 2. I'm obviously going to have a look at the board for Blade 4 because there's something amiss with that one. Probably just a bad solder joint, I'm guessing. Okay. Take it down there, put it in blade two. So that's working as well, although again we've got a slight dodginess to it. Hold on. Yeah, this is similar to um, Blade 4 actually. So Blades 1 and 3 so far look much better than 2 and 4. I wonder why that is. Now, to be honest, I'm using two different types of connectors on this board because I had some old ones left over. And it may be connected to that. As a possibility. I've actually got mixed ones on there. I can't remember how I've populated it. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? So it's always it's those two really. Let me just have a quick look. Under the microscope at the blade contact to see if there's an issue. Bear with me. I'm going to look under the microscope at these because I wonder if there's an issue in the actual contacts. Oh, they look a bit shit. Remember I said that I forgot to take the paste mask off? Well, if you look closely under the mic under the microscope. You can actually see blobs of solder. I clearly didn't um, do a good job of cleaning the paste off. So there were bits of um, 
sold on it. Maybe that's making it worse. I wonder if I can make that bit better. What would be a good device for doing that? Um, I've got a file, but that might be a bit harsh. Small microfile. I might end up just stopping this working entirely. so ugly under the microscope. I've really made it horrible. I'm not sure that's helped at all. Probably made it a lot worse. Frankly. <laughs> Don't try this at home folks. This is a really bad bodge. So ugly. <laughs> really shouldn't have done that. That's probably going to be much worse now. Holy crap. Using the file was a really bad idea. It's probably made it worse. You know, it's about the same. Interesting. I wonder if I haven't soldered that very well. I mean, it could be that I've got the definition wrong, of course. In the um, voice board file. The thing I'm doing with this seems to make it um, anyway better. Interesting. This seems to be consistent. I'm missing two of the LEDs. How oh, odd. Just going to go back to one. Hold on. Interesting problem. See, it works perfectly in number one. Mm, I wonder. Maybe. Maybe it is a fault in the um, board file, or, 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 could it be just bad solder joints on the um, Black Ice NXT for the sockets? I'll have to have a look. I'm not. I'm not going to take it apart now, though working nicely. I don't want to spoil it. Interesting. Any more questions? Otherwise I think I'm going to call it for this evening. Because I've got lots to do tomorrow. I have more boards to build. Having gone through the build with um, of both parts, both parts, more than two parts actually, um, two main parts, I've now got a good idea 
of what any issues are. So that should make things a bit easier. But it's kind of nice, I like it. I mean, obviously I need to improve the microblades themselves. That's, um, that's fairly um, obvious because mechanically they move a bit. So obviously I need to change the dimension slightly. But hurrah! So, any more questions? Otherwise, I'm going to call the stream for today. So I've still got some other stuff that I need to do. Um, but not with this, with other things. But it's good to see the whole thing working nicely. I think it looks lovely as well. You can't necessarily see that here because um, that camera view is not that brilliant. But yay! Hurrah! Good stuff! Right, so if there's no more questions, I'm going to call it for today. I will be on Discord for a bit longer, if anyone has questions. There are questions from both of us on Discord. Um, presumably the power management hasn't been tested. No, I haven't, haven't done the um, power delivery yet. I've still got all that testing to do. Um, and the hyper RAM and hyper flash can be tested. No, um, I've got to make a board for Sylvain, which I'm going to send off probably, hopefully, next week. I want to get all the boards out to you guys first, development kits, and then I'm going to get one out to Sylvain so that he can have it, cast his magic on it. One thing that you might be able to do, I mean, I'm hoping to have one ready to give to you um, when I see you on, you know, Saturday or whenever, Laurie, rather than post it. Um, you might want to try the um, standard Hyperbus um, code that you had before, or try the um, try Gatecats stuff, see if that runs. It doesn't have to be optimised to know if it works or not. And then, obviously, Sylvan will do all the optimised stuff. And hopefully we can turn that into something that can be pulled into Amaranth, which would be nice. Um, yeah. I post was asking about the TFT blade. Why, why didn't I see that? Um, I've got that here. I might be able to put one of those together later in the week. Depends how I prioritise my time, really. Or it's building development kits or trying this one. Um, but I've got a connector, I think, that I can try this with. And then maybe try it with... Oh, where did I put... Damn. I'll put it in here. Oh, I know where I put it. Um, 
Maybe get it working with one of these. What I might do uh, is if I solder that one up this week, I can give you one on Saturday with your kit. Um, Nori, one of these. And I'll solder an FPC connector on it, and maybe we could have a play around with this um, because you've got quite a bit of experience of driving the uh, seven line LCDs, SPIs. So you might be able to get this combination working if I give it to you to have a play with these two. If I get chance, I'll leave that out so I remember. Um, which reminds me actually that we go definitely want to put this file back far too aggressive the SD cards I need to put this But yeah, I'll, I'll solder one up and then you can have a play around with it. I think I've only got one of those displays. I don't think I've got another one. Did you buy the same display, um, Laurie, as this? Did you get one of these as well when I got these months ago? If you didn't, I'll lend you this one, but I seem to remember you buying um, something. I don't know if it's the same pinouts as the uh, other ones, but With that on the back. Maybe that will help identify. Um. numbers on the back that would help you identify if you bought one otherwise you can uh, you're welcome to borrow mine I mean you know more about those things than me you'll be able to get it working faster than I can I'm sure and I can focus on some of the other stuff I am so looking forward to some other people working on this rather than just me it's gonna be so cool Right, I'm out of liquid. Let's call it. Anything else before we depart for the evening? No? My post says looks good. Yay. 
Yeah, well, I had to check it out first before building any of the others because if, if there's any problems, I need to know. Um, so I've got a few things to check, which I'll probably do in the morning. Uh, check the pinouts in the pinout in the board file. Check those SD, sorry, the blade sockets. Um, see why two and four. Slightly dodgy. Cool. Okay, then, folks, thank you for joining me. I will see you again. I don't know if I'm going to do Friday. It all depends. I'll let you know. But I, as I say, I will be down on Discord anyhow. So um, we can continue the conversation down there. Ciao.